Welcome back to the show. Today we're talking about freedom of conscience and freedom of speech in Canada with members of Parliament Kelly Block and Rachel Thomas. conscience or religion and freedom of speech are both fundamental freedoms that are actually protected in the Canadian Constitution. However, over this past season, the battle has intensified on where exactly the line is between these individual rights and the power of government to force professionals into certain actions in order to keep their employment or the power of government to control what Canadians can say, post on social media or see. The question has been exasperated by the legalization of medical procedures such as medical assistance in dying, mandated vaccines for employment, and the rise of social media as the main forum where everyday Canadians go to express their views on issues like these. Two pieces of legislation have recently been tabled in Parliament that touch on this issue. C-11, the Online Streaming Act, was introduced by Liberal Minister of Canadian Heritage, the Honourable Pablo Rodriguez, and is set to update the current Broadcast Act to regulate what Canadians see online. Given the current climate in our nation, critics are concerned that this bill may be used to inhibit free speech on critical topics that could benefit from robust debate right now. Advocates say it will encourage Canadian content. However, the definition of what would qualify as Canadian content is still ambiguous. Another bill, C-230, the Protection of Freedom of Conscience Act, was tabled by Conservative Member of Parliament Kelly Block. If passed, it would make it a criminal offence to intimidate or coerce a medical professional to take part in assisting in pa a patient's death, and also an offence to fire or refuse to hire a medical professional if the sole reason is that they do not want to take part in assisted suicide. MP Kelly Block joins with us today to talk about her bill and why she feels it's important at this time. Also also joining us today is Member of Parliament Rachel Thomas, who has been a strong advocate for freedom of speech, speaking out about both the new Online Streaming Act as well as its predecessor, C-10, in the last Parliament. Thank you for being with us for this important conversation today, so let's get to it. Well, we are privileged, honoured to have uh, Ms. Kelly Block with us, a Member of Parliament, part of the Saskatchewan Caucus, and an exemplary leader in our nation, uh, touching some really important issues to, to many of our viewers, I know. But first of all, uh, Kelly, thank you so much for joining me today. And why don't you, just for our viewers, just give a little introduction to yourself, the riding you represent, and, and perhaps you know why you felt to get involved in the political sphere. Sure. Thank you so much, Fatine. It's a real privilege to be joining you today. I thank you for the opportunity to talk about um, the bill that I've introduced and certainly um, the opportunity to just introduce myself. As Fatine said, I'm Kelly Block. I'm a member of Parliament from Saskatchewan, the beautiful riding of Carleton Trail, Eagle Creek. You know, I think what really catapulted me into to the role that I'm in now is just having a an understanding that I had a responsibility to, to give back to my community, to serve in any way I can. And um, when the opportunity arose, I said yes, and was fortunate enough to, to win the nomination. And as I've said, win the last five elections. I've seen you pick up so many uh, worthy causes over the years through advocacy or different motions and, and bills that you've brought forward. Um, but right now you've got an incredible bill on the table. It's the second time you brought it forward. Can you tell our viewers exactly what it is and why you felt to pick it up at this time? Sure. So my bill is Bill 230, and it is the Protection of Freedoms of Conscience Act. Uh, when I introduced this bill in the last parliament, medical professionals were adjusting to, and in some ways waking up to the new reality they now practice in. The expansion of medical assisted suicide had just become law through Bill C-7, um, and this made more and more medical professionals uncomfortable and really questioning whether or not they would be able to continue practicing in their profession. Uh, this concern has only increased 
So when I was fortunate enough to be drawn with such a low, lum low number in the PMB lottery this time, I knew right away that I would introduce the same bill that I had introduced in the last parliament um, when it, it died on the order paper. And so I knew I wanted to reintroduce this issue. Um, so Bill, bill 230 is very similar to my bill in the last parliament. It amends the criminal code to make it an offense to intimidate or uh, to intimidate a medical practitioner, nurse practitioner, pharmacist, or other healthcare professional for the purpose of compelling them to participate directly or indirectly in the provision of medical assistance and dying. And then it, it also makes it an offense to dismiss from employment or refuse to hire or employ those medical professionals for the very same reasons. Okay, and so there's been some water under the bridge, like you said, since uh, the first time you tabled this bill. I'm curious to know, first of all, how it was received by your colleagues when you tabled it the first time, um, and then maybe some of the feedback that you've gotten from the medical, uh, medical community, um, even as you've been on this journey. So this, the response to my bill in the last parliament was amazing. Of course, it aligned very well with our policy declaration statement. It aligned very well with, a, with um, some amendments that had been introduced by members um, on the Justice Committee towards the end of their study on Bill C-7. Thousands of people wrote to their members of parliament, signed petitions and got their friends and family members to do the same. We received dozens of petitions which have been introduced in, in the house. Additionally, there was a strong um, support from medical professionals and from groups concerned by the slippery slope that medical assistance in dying is creating here in Canada. And um, I would say that because Bill, uh, my bill in the last parliament died on the order paper after the first hour of debate, um, it's hard to know what the, the response will be to Bill C-230 as we go, as we go forward um, and see this bill debated. But again, I would have to say the response um, by Canadians and by the medical professional was overwhelmingly positive. During the time that my private member's bill was introduced and debated and over the summer received many emails from individuals, physicians who were describing their concerns around the expansion of medical assistance in dying and the impact that that would have um, on, on their uh, profession and their ability to continue um, serving patients in a way that was um, that aligned with their values. It is such an important bill. And, you know, not to mention the fact that Canada, uh, you know, different provinces are in a doctor and medical professional shortage. You know, we live in New Brunswick here. Uh, you know, you're the lucky one if you actually get a doctor. So I think it goes without saying that anything we can do to uh, make medical professionals and our, our amazing doctors feel comfortable in their profession, like they can function with their conscience intact, will go a long way to even strengthening our healthcare system. So this is a critical bill from, from a few angles here. So what can people do if they want to support your good work on this? I, you know, I think it was very similar to the last time we spoke and I and I shared what individuals could could do to support Bill C-268. Uh, people can sign petitions which are available on my website at kellyblockmp.ca. Uh, members of parliament want to know what is important to their constituents or need to know what is important to their constituents. And so again, I would encourage um, Canadians all across the country to send a very short, respectful email to their MP calling on them to support this private member's bill. It would also be very helpful if um, people would share about the, the my private member's bill, help spread the word that, that it's coming up for debate, that uh, potentially it could be voted on before we rise for the summer and again, uh, make their views known to their member of parliament. I do have a Facebook page. Of course, everybody has Facebook pages and uh, we have shared content on, on that Facebook page. 
And we still have the, um, the website Safe Second Opinions where individuals can sign uh, petition there as well. So lots of things that can be done. And one of one of the most important things to do is to talk about this with your family and friends and encourage them to do the very same thing. Yes, absolutely. Well, Kelly, uh, Mrs. Block, I just want to say on behalf of myself and our viewers, thank you so much for picking up this very important uh, cause, this very important bill. And, uh, you know, hopefully the government will, uh, this will go through fast enough or the government will stand long enough that this can actually get through the House of Commons this time and not die on the order paper. And uh, just want to, again, say how much we appreciate your work. So we will be checking out all of those portals of communications. And I also want to say this because I feel like it would maybe be a bit tone deaf if we didn't. I know that many of those in your writing are from uh, the Ukrainian community of Ukrainian descent. And uh, we just want you to know that we are praying, uh, you know, for the Ukrainian Canadians, praying for those affected in your writing uh, by what's happening in Ukraine. And we will continue to do so. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Block, for joining me today. Any final words for our viewers before we sign off? You know, I, again, thank you, Fatine, for um, raising this issue, for having me, having me on your show and giving me the opportunity to share um, my private member's bill, the importance of it to not only our medical community, but to Canadians who will find themselves a patient, uh, you know, at any point in time. And uh, I thank you for your prayers uh, for us here in Saskatchewan, for our Ukrainian Canadians and uh, I join you in that. Of course. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. We'll be watching this closely. Thank you. It actually puts us in danger of having, having speech censored in the online space. That's a problem. It's just an attack on those who have found great success within a non-traditional space. We love Canada, and we want to see it strong for generations to come. That's why we do this show. We can't do it alone. We need your help. Unlike commercial TV, this program is 100% donor funded. If you'd like to see more episodes produced on important issues for our nation, please consider signing up to be a monthly partner or giving a special gift today. Every gift makes a real difference and all gifts are tax deductible. Together, we can build a better Canada for the future. Visit Fateen.tv or call 1-866-844-0844 to donate today. Well, right now joining us is none other than Member of Parliament from Lethbridge, Alberta, Rachel Thomas. It's been a couple of years since you've been on the show, but I am so grateful to have you back to talk about this important bill, C-11. So first of all, thank you for joining me. And second of all, can you unpack for our viewers what exactly is happening with this bill right now? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Faitin. It's really a pleasure to be with you and to have the opportunity to talk about this important piece of legislation. Um, Bill C-11, of course, replaces its predecessor, which was known as Bill C-10. And of course, we, we talked a lot about that last spring. Uh, now it's, it's about a year later, and here we are once again talking about this important issue. And of course, the issue at hand is this. We're talking about a piece of legislation that the Liberal government has uh, put together that will ultimately regulate the internet. Uh, so what they're doing is they're taking something called the Broadcasting Act and they're going to apply it to the internet. Um, in doing that, they will in fact be imposing what I would say are their set of ideals on both creators, those who generate content and put it online, as well as, you know, they'll be, they'll be censoring or dictating to viewers, you and me, um, at what we should be, you know, wanting to watch uh, or access online. And, and the reason they say they're going about doing this is because they're wanting to protect, quote, Canadian arts and culture. The new minister uh, on the file, Heritage, uh, Mr. Ro minister Rodriguez, he, he's come out and said, you know, all of the problems that existed within Bill C-10 have now been fixed. Um, and of course, the main problem with the former bill w was that it, it went after user-generated content, which is content that you might put up, content that I might put up, content that, that creatives put up. The minister's claim is it's just not true. So what he's done is he very slyly has gone in and added one provision in section 4.1, but then he's actually negated that provision 
in section 4.2. Um, and, the, and, and, and so it's, it's actually this, this convoluted bill that is full of flips and turns and twists. It's, it's a pretzel. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's extremely muddy. And as a result, then, it actually puts us in danger of having, having speech censored in the online space. Um, that's a problem. So as much as the minister might try to claim that this will provide or create a level playing field between traditional broadcasters and non-traditional broadcasters, um, it, it actually really is just an attack on those who have found great success within a non-traditional space. Okay, so the government then, some of your colleagues have put it this way, that they will now regulate what Canadians see, can see and can say because they're playing with the algorithms. And that's just a fancy way of saying that they, they decide what pops up first in your feed. And so uh, why is that problematic? And also let's unpack the whole thing of defining Canadian content. Obviously, we're working with a government right now that doesn't like dissension, uh, that makes you check a box, you know, to get funding if you uh, don't, whether, to let, let them know whether you agree or don't agree with their ideology. So when we're talking about Canadian content, what you see, what you can say, um, why is that potentially precarious territory? Exactly. Let me let me explore that or unpack that from two different angles. So one, let's talk about creators, those who put content online. And then two, let's talk about viewers, those that want to access that material. So first of all, creators, they 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 have found this space called YouTube or TikTok, etc. Um, and they put content there in order to garner an audience. Um, they provide material that ultimately Canadians and people around the world want to be able to access. You know, interestingly enough, viewers might, might want to know this, that in 2013, Justin Bieber really caught his edge by releasing videos on YouTube. You know, he wasn't given the time of day by traditional broadcasters, but because he was able to use this unique platform, he really was able to go big. And of course, that's significant because Justin Bieber is Canadian. Some people might not know that. So, Of course, of course. But if you were to t take the traditional definition of, quote, Canadian content, which is what the current government is looking to protect, if you were to take that definition and apply it to Justin Bieber's content, he actually wouldn't make the cut which means that the government under Bill C-11 would, would actually take his content, what he's putting out there, and they would bump it down in the queue. In other words, it would de be deprioritized. So while other material that fits their definition of Canadian content would be moved up to maybe, you know, item number one or item number two on your screen when you do a YouTube search, Justin Bieber might be found on page 53, which of course is censoring him. It is moving him behind. It is actually Actually, a way for the government to pick winners and losers. So they will be choosing which artists get to succeed and which artists just don't. And so, of course, you know, this is incredibly damaging to those digital first creators that are really making a go of it. The second issue then is with viewers. So, you know, I go on to YouTube to look up maybe some cooking videos. I don't really, you know, it doesn't matter to me whether it comes from a creator in France or a, a creator in Canada or a creator in the United States, I, I simply want to know how to make a quiche, you know, and, and at the end of the day, what this bill will do, though, is the government won't care about my preferences or my desires or my needs as a viewer and the information that I need to access. Instead, the government will determine what it wants me to see. So it doesn't necessarily want me to find the best recipe. Instead, it wants me to see things that are, quote, Canadian. And so at the end of the day, I might get a recipe with a 2.2 star rating, whereas I could have had one with a five star rating. Our ability as Canadians to access information will be thwarted by this legislation. And, and there's no doubt about it. That's a direct assault on our freedom. So when it comes to the content creators, you know, it seems to me like this would fall under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom Section 2, freedom of expression, uh, freedom of the press. Is this possibly, is there possibly a constitutional challenge uh, within this bill? 
Yeah, interestingly enough, you know, when when this bill's predecessor was being discussed uh, in 2021, uh, the the minister actually, the minister at that time, um, actually admitted that there could possibly be a a charter challenge. Um, And so certainly because we see many of those same flaws that existed in C-10 now repeated in C-11, there's no doubt in my mind that there is opportunity here for a charter challenge. Um, you know, going forward. And I, I think that's something that the Liberal government really needs to take uh, into consideration. Um, but but most importantly, they, you know, <laughs> they, they shouldn't even have to have the threat of a charter challenge. They, they just should do the right thing from the get-go. And the, and the right thing is ultimately to respect the rights and freedoms of Canadians and to make sure that those are protected without people needing to go through the costly process of a legal challenge. Okay, so the government is saying, listen, we want to do this because we want to bolster Canadian content producers. We want to give them a bit of an edge within the boundaries of Canada. But we know in the Internet world, that's going to impact the global audience as well. And we are potentially going to be actually throttling down Canadians that don't fit our Canadian content criteria. Um, with this, this is people's livelihoods, right? <laughs> this is that you're toying with, that you're playing with. Has that come up in the debate? The fact that we're going to decide who actually gets to do well and gets to feed their family, gets to uh, prosper in this context and in, in, in the market, and, and we're going to actually throttle down that don't. Has that come into the conversation at all? Yeah, Fatine, it's a great question. Uh, you know, it definitely came into the conversation during the discussion on the predecessor to this bill. Um, because Bill C-11 hasn't, you know, it, it's only been debated a little bit in the House of Commons so far. It hasn't come into, into the House, you know, in, in full force quite yet. And so we're looking to continue to engage in that debate, you know, in a robust manner and to raise that point. Um, certainly it has been to some extent, but I think, you know, we can we can do a lot more there in order to raise attention. Um, you know, ultimately, yes, we have incredible creators within this country, people who are very entrepreneurial, very innovative, very creative, willing to take a risk, put themselves out there, uh, you know, make content available. And ultimately, by doing so, they're able to find an audience. And as that audience grows, you know, then there are marketing dollars that are, you know, being brought in, which obviously is is a way of life for for so, so many. And again, I would I would draw attention to the fact that Canadian producers, Canadian creatives are really punching above their weight when it comes to the content that they're able to put out, but in terms of the audience that they're able to uh, acquire for themselves as well. And then of course, you know, the revenue that they're able to generate from that. And so these are individuals who should be celebrated, you know, they, they should be they they should be they sh- we should be championing them we should be excited about what they're accomplishing we should want them to be innovative and contributing co- to to society in this way and instead it would appear that through bill c11 the government is actually wanting to punish them for finding success on a non-traditional platform you know instead the government wants to reward traditional artists only. And I, I, I just think this is so problematic, not only for these artists, but again, you know, for, for us as a society, uh, as a whole, you know, those of us who want to access that content, who, who really will have that effort thwarted. And then also, you know, what does this say about Canada? What does this say about our ability to celebrate creators? What does this say about our ability to innovate and move forward into new spaces? I, 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 think, I think the government is, is, you know, setting a very dangerous precedent by going down this road. Yeah, so many important questions that we need to ask uh, about this bill and at this juncture. And so we're talking a lot here about letting the market decide, you know, free market economies. And obviously there's an economic ideology behind that, that when you allow the market to decide, that's when the greatest, um, you get the greatest result on in the economy and also uh, the greatest innovation, et cetera. And so, so there's that side of it. But I do want to talk about the political implications as well, because we interviewed uh, Senator Pamela Wallen, you know, a former anchor with CT. 
TV as they looked at C-10, uh, the former bill in the Senate. Uh, this is over a year ago now. And she flagged that the minister at that time actually said that it was important to regulate basically political dissent, that the government needed to have tools to be able to throttle back voices that are undermining or disagreeing with the government. And I, I remember in the interview, uh, Mrs. Thomas, um, Mrs. Wallen was so shocked that this even came out of the heritage minister's mouth. Do you think they've actually uh, paddled back on that, or do you feel like that ideology is still embedded in the heart of this bill, controlling people's political um, discourse on the internet? Mm -hmm. I, I think Minister Rodriguez is a little more polished than the former heritage minister. And so I don't think he'll put it quite that way, but, but that's exactly at the heart of this piece of legislation as well. And that is, you know, ultimately the government wants to be able to control what we can and cannot access, which, you know, there are things that are politically inconvenient for the liberals um, that, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if those things uh, you know, got bumped to uh, to page 80 <laughs> instead of being available on page one when we do a Google search. Uh, again, I, I think that's pretty dangerous in terms of protecting uh, freedom, in terms of upholding democracy, in terms of making sure that Canadians are able to function according to the truest sense of what it means to be Canadian, which of course is true, North, strong and free. Well put. So if our viewers want to find out more about this bill, track you know, its progress through the House of Commons right now and effectively make their voice heard uh, on this issue, uh, what would you advise them to do? Again, excellent question. Thank you. I, I think, you know, it's it's uh, it's so important that we not only be informed, but that we take action. Uh, the voices of Canadians truly do matter. And so I would encourage Canadians, please use your social media feeds, you know, share share this, <laughs> share this story, uh, share information with regard to Bill C-11 and the impact that it will have on Canadians. Um, in addition to that, I would say, please write the minister. Um, you know, it, it, it only takes a sentence or two. In fact, it only takes a couple of words. Stop Bill C-11. That's it. Uh, it. It really doesn't need to be any grander than that. And so I would, I would plead with Canadians, please get involved. Please have your voice heard. Uh, please stand up for Canadians' freedoms. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Rachel Thomas, Member of Parliament from Lethbridge, Alberta. Uh, if she is your MP, pop by their office, bring them a latte, give her a high five. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Thomas, you're doing an incredible job and we really do appreciate the good work that you are doing and have been doing for so long. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for joining us for this discussion. I hope you found it both interesting and empowering. If you want to watch it again or share it with your loved ones, simply go to faithteen.tv where it is posted along with other previous episodes as well. You can also download our free smartphone app or sign up for our email list to ensure that you get notified when new programs are released so that you never miss a show. Lastly, thank you to all of our monthly donors and our special partners. You empower us to stay on air every single week and we want you know how much we appreciate you. We could not keep at this without you. If you want to sign up to become a monthly partner or give a special gift today, simply go to faithteen.tv or give us a call at 1-866-844-0844. Every gift really does make a difference and is tax receivable as well. Thank you so much again for joining me. I hope to see you next week.